Hello, everybody, and welcome into episode number 140 of the Bible 2021 podcast. We are reading Ezekiel chapter 28 today, and our focus is on the origin, pride, and downfall of Satan which I realize is a most strange episode focus, I know. But bear with me. Let's see what we can learn from the Word today. I think at the least it will be quite interesting. I do want to point you to our website, Bible2021.com. You can contact us there, send a question or a critique or check out show notes or read a transcript of each episode. Tons and tons of writing there. In fact, I think there's uh, hundreds of pages worth of show notes for you to peruse through for this year. Today, we're talking about the king of Tyre, or are we? Ezekiel 28, our chapter of the day, is fascinating and a very hotly debated passage. On the surface, it's a lament and a pronouncement of judgment by God on the king of Tyre, which is a country very close to Judah. Now, modern-day Tyre is in the country of Lebanon. It's the fourth largest city there. It's still an inhabited city. It's one of the oldest continually inhabited cities in the entire world, dating all of the way back to 2,750 years before Jesus. And that means that humans have lived in this city for almost 5,000 years. That is utterly mind-boggling to me. So in the early days of the kingdom of Israel, King David and King Solomon were actually staunch allies with Hiram, king of Tyre, and free trade happened between the kingdoms. Later on, King Ahab, who was a very wicked king, married Jezebel for his queen, who was the daughter of the king of Tyre. By Ezekiel's day, relations between Judah and Tyre were not so good, and Ezekiel 28 contains a strong censure and criticism of the pride and arrogance of Tyre's king, who viewed himself as a god among men. We read in verses 6 through 8, Therefore, this is what the Lord God says, Because you regard your heart as that of a god, I am about to bring strangers against you, ruthless men from the nations. They will draw their swords against your magnificent wisdom and will pierce your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the heart of the sea. Well, The historical king that's being referred to here is a guy named Ithabael III, who was an able ruler. He was even even able to resist a significant siege from Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, who was pretty much the superpower of this time. Now, before you skip to the next episode, let me assure you, we're not today going to cover the career of Ithabael and have more facts about Tyre. Why not? Because I, along with many, but not all, Bible teachers and scholars, believe something much more significant is going on in Ezekiel 28 than just a takedown of a prideful human king named Ithobael. A few verses into Ezekiel's criticism of the king of Tyre, things change. God says to write a lament now for the king of Tyre, And the lament begins in verse 12. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every kind of precious stone covered you. Carnelian, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise and emerald. Your mountings and settings were crafted in gold. They were prepared on the day you were created. Now, these are strange words spoken by God of a human king. We can perhaps understand all the references there to the precious stones that that covered this being as being a reference to, you know, having a lot of wealth and a lot of jewelry. Less understandable, though, is God's statement that this person was in Eden, the Garden of God. In other words, the Garden of Eden. Could this be an exaggeration of sorts? Well, If so, it's a very, very strange exaggeration that we find nowhere else in Scripture. It's absolutely unprecedented. In terms of those who were in Eden, I count three beings other than God himself, and not counting the cherubim that guarded the entrance after Adam and Eve were kicked out. And those three beings were Adam, Eve, and the serpent Satan. Well, if we keep reading God's description of this supposed king of Tyre, He says that the being being referenced was perfect in beauty, full of wisdom, 
and the seal of perfection. Now, this is a very interesting description if we take things at exact face value. How could a human king of a pagan nation be perfect in beauty, full of wisdom, and the very seal of perfection in God's eyes? That's really, really strange. So this isn't making sense so far. And if we keep reading, it makes even less sense. Verse 14 through 16, God says, You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones from the day you were created. You were blameless in your ways until wickedness was found in you. Through the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I expelled you in disgrace from the mountain of God. So are we to believe that a human king, Ithobael III, was somehow living on God's holy mountain? Could a human king be blameless in his ways from the days of his creation until wickedness was found in him? That's a really strange statement from God about a human king, especially when you consider that King David in Psalm 51.5 says, Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. When we realize that the Bible calls David the man after God's own heart, and we see many other teachings in the Bible that point to the doctrine of original sin, that all human beings, including babies, are sinners, then I can't see how God would call a pagan king blameless. Blameless is a strong word when it comes out of the lips of God. As well, we see in this passage that the individual being discussed was expelled in disgrace from the mountain of God. That sounds an awful lot like the description in Revelation 12 of the expulsion of Satan from heaven, and it sounds like nothing at all that could be applied to a human king of Tyre or a human king of anywhere. One more bit of evidence, and this might be the strongest bit so far. In verses 14 and 16, we read this. You were an anointed guardian cherub. Remember yesterday we talked about the cherub, the cherubim? For I had appointed you, so I expelled you in disgrace from the mountain of God and banished you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. So twice, God calls this being a guardian cherub. How could that possibly apply to a human being, a pagan king? No idea. But maybe you could easily see how such a thing could apply to Satan, the accuser. Satan is quite clearly a heavenly being created by God just like the cherubim. So much of what is spoken in Ezekiel 28, 11-19 could not possibly be applied to a human being without a tremendous amount of stretching, exaggeration, and hyperbole but it could most certainly apply to a cherub, a heavenly being, potentially the only heavenly being we know of that is fallen, which is named in the Bible, Satan. So if that theory is correct, then why in this passage is Satan euphemistically referred to as the king of Tyre? Well, the best theory I can give to you on that question is that, much like Isaiah 14 This passage begins by targeting a real human king, a human king that was so full of pride and ambition that he began to think of himself as a god. Now, the comparison seems to be that Satan made this exact error, but from the perspective of a heavenly being. He was beautiful, flawless, wealthy, wise, and perfect until pride reared up and became sin and wickedness for him, which led to rebellion and him being cast out of heaven slash the mountain of God. And I believe this is exactly what we are seeing in today's passage. And honestly, it's pretty clear to me. I can't read Ezekiel 28, especially verses 11 through 19, and not think that this is not, is, could, this is describing anything but Satan. It, it seems to be virtually impossible, if not out and out impossible, for verses 11 through 19 to be applied to a human being. So I believe that's what's going on in today's passage. But as we read the passage together, you prayerfully listen. You do some studying and see what you discover. This is Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1 in the Christian Standard Bible. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the Lord God says. Your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the heart of the sea. Yet you are a man and not a God. 
Though you have regarded your heart as that of a god, yes, you are wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and understanding, you have acquired wealth for yourself. You have acquired gold and silver for your treasuries. By your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth, but your heart has become proud because of your wealth. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Because you regard your heart as that of a god, I am about to bring strangers against you, ruthless men from the nations. They will draw their swords against your magnificent wisdom and will pierce your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the heart of the sea. Will you still say I am a god in the presence of those who slay you? Yet you are only a man, not a god. In the hands of those who kill you, you will die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of strangers, for I have spoken. This is the declaration of the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, lament for the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the Lord God says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every kind of precious stone covered you, carnelian, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise and emerald. Your mountings and settings were crafted in gold. They were prepared on the day you were created. You were an anointed guardian cherub, for I had appointed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones. From the day you were created, you were blameless in your ways until wickedness was found in you. Through the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I expelled you in disgrace from the mountain of God and banished you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud because of your beauty. For the sake of your splendor, you corrupted your wisdom. So I threw you down to the ground. I made you a spectacle before kings. You profaned your sanctuaries by the magnitude of your iniquities and your dishonest trade. So I made fire come from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of everyone watching you. All those who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have become an object of horror and will never exist again. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, face Sidon and prophesy against it. You are to say, this is what the Lord God says. Look, I am against you, Sidon, and I will display my glory within you. They will know that I am the Lord when I execute judgments against her and demonstrate my holiness through her. I will send a plague against her and bloodshed in her streets. The slain will fall within her while the sword is against her on every side. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The house of Israel will no longer be hurt by prickly briars or painful thorns from all their neighbors who treat them with contempt. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. When I gather the house of Israel from the peoples where they are scattered, I will demonstrate my holiness through them in the sight of the nations, and they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will live there securely, build houses and plant vineyards. They will live securely when I execute judgments against their neighbors who treat them with contempt. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. Amen. Well, friends, wrestle with Ezekiel 28 search it out through the scriptures and see what you come up with. For now, though, we'll close with our Bible verse of the month for May, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember... I am with you always to the end of the age. What a great promise to end on. Good day to you, friends, and Godspeed.